So good to see you all again. You too. How are you liking the weather? It's cold. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> how are you guys doing? Yeah. Good. Hey, Nate. How are you doing? Good to see you again. See you again. Good to see you. Well, the barn looks amazing. Yeah. Yes. Can you yeah, give us a check tour? Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Yeah, let's go. So it's still, you know, a mess, obviously. Still construction. But... Yeah, but it looks amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited to be using it. And last time we were here, it was just nothing. Nothing. It was a dream. Uh, yeah. Yep. Build that farm! I love the color scheme. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. Yeah, everyone thought it was weird that I wanted it to match the rest of the stuff. I yeah, like, no. Why would I want a different color? So we've got four 10 by 10 overhead doors, which would be really nice for oh, yeah. bringing horses in and equipment. Oh, yeah. And... So tell us about the barn. Like how many, I mean, you already got panel stalls up yeah. here, but they're temporary. Right. Um, there will be um, six, yeah, six stalls on either end. Um, they'll be 12 by 12. So they'll run here and here. This will be the office. Um, we've got the water plumbed for, there'll be a little bathroom here and then right on the other side will be a wash bay. And then we'll have two cross stalls, cross tie stalls. And then at that end will be a climate controlled feed and tack room. Wow. So I can get all that feed out of the Armada eventually. <laughs> well, when we were here before, right, you had the feed in the, the car in for the, car. the horses. It and still is. We are looking at papers of this bar and it was just a dream and yeah. now here it is. Yeah. So are you going to concrete the whole floor? Or? Everything but the stalls will be uh -huh. concreted. Um, they'll have lime screen. Nice. Dreams come true. It, it, yeah, walking in here is just like, wow. I just can't believe it. It's what your organization needed, yeah. definitely. So happy Thank for you all. This is so exciting. Couldn't have done it without you guys, that's for sure. Yeah, it is a, it is a dream come true. Behind me is the barn that the Full Circle of Life grant made possible and it's super exciting to see the progress that's been made here. So they're doing an event here. We're doing an event on Sunday, and it's a one-day open-door shelter, low-cost surrender day. So people have already started surrendering horses here. All right, so good. We just have the farm. Okay, we're good there. All right, perfect. The one-day open-door shelters is a concept we came up with to help horses across the United States in different locations. The one thing we figured out pretty quickly is it was too much for our team to travel across the United States in different locations trying to help intake 50 to 100 horses in different fairgrounds. What we're trying to do through this mentoring program is get other organizations out there being able to open up to their communities and help these horses right in their communities because we can't do it all ourselves. That's why we need to come together in the horse community and do all we can to help horses. Cindy, this has been such an amazing journey to take with you guys. And we came up here and there was just a uh, an area that you're like, this is where this amazing barn can be. And now there's a barn out there, so it's amazing. But the grant helped to get the barn, but a lot of the mentoring and stuff that we did through this program was on fundraising and social media and developing the website better. And one thing I don't know you may not be aware of is um, back at the very beginning, I told you if you're making a post, put that donation button on it. And you start doing it very faithfully. Yeah. Do you have any idea how much money has come in through those donation buttons, just the buttons on Facebook? I do. Okay. What are we kind of looking at financially as fundraising goes? Uh, quite a difference. Um, let me see here. Uh, Facebook, um, last year, the same time period, we did a little over $3,000. Okay. Um, this year, we did over $25,000. i am so thrilled for you. <laughs> that is so amazing. So, um, how many horses have you 
have you brought in this year? This whole year, um, not just since yeah. April or May, um, 85. 85. 85. That's, that's so many horses. That like, is the most ever uh, we had done. I went back and I um, went through each year. We did 51 in mm -hmm. 2015, that's when we were still doing the kill pen thing. Yeah. Um, which obviously was easy. People mm -hmm. would throw money, you know, yeah. to those horses, but then once they were here, nothing, you know, yes. so it was a big difference. So, you know, those, the horses are coming in and the people are wanting to help the horses coming mm -hmm. in and, and then, we're helping more. And donating the money to help care for those horses yep. ahead of time. Yep. At the beginning of, of this, when we gave you the grant and you applied for the grant is, to try being a full circle of life shelter, meaning you would take any horse at any age with any health problem and stuff, um, is now that you've, you've piloted being an open admission full circle of life shelter, is this something that you're gonna wanna continue to do or do you wanna go back to the traditional rescue? Most definitely, this way it's not even just helping the horses, it's helping um, the people with the horses. You know, a lot of them, you know, it's so hard to let go of a horse sometimes and they feel very comforted knowing that when it comes here it's not going to end up in the slaughter pipeline. So you raised five thousand dollars for the barn before before getting the grant mm -hmm. and then we gave you a ten thousand dollar grant to get the barn built and and then the mentoring uh, over the summer and and until now and I'll always be there for you but I think something that really true shows the dedication of, you know, the heart and passion that goes into animal rescue is that we'll do whatever it takes to make what needs to happen happen. And I know once everything was put in place for the barn and it was, you know, construction was going and all this stuff and these plans that there wasn't enough money to complete the barn. So what happened? They sold his motorcycle. Oh, it's stupid. Just how long had he had it? Oh, he'd had it since 1990. So I I sold my um, 75 Harley uh, Super Glide that I've had for oh 18 years, but. It's, we need the money to build a barn, and I need the barn more than I need the Harley, so that's what we did. Um, actually, I had to argue with Cindy about it, she didn't want me to sell it, but it's uh, just you got to do what you got to do. Part of the mentoring we've been doing with Ponytails is to teach them how to take a large number of horses in solo on their own. So today we're doing a low cost surrender event. Uh, the first 25 horses are actually free and we're covering those horses initial intake. And then after that, they'll ask for a donation from the owners. So this is kind of their, their thing. I'm gonna sit back and see how they do. For the check-in, we need about four to six people that would be willing to do that part. Um, that's meeting the trailer and the driver at the road. Do I have any volunteers that would be interested in doing that part? We don't want anybody to stay out there all day. <laughs> that's not our goal. We want them to be able to switch around. So if we could start maybe with... I'll help unload. You want to help unload? Okay, so I've got two willing to help unload. Final check-in, that's going to be verifying paperwork. I would assume Cindy will probably be at that station. Um, is there anyone else that wants to help with paperwork? It's pretty organized over there. They just need to have that uh, surrender form. They need to, um, if they're not one of the first 25, they'll have to have a cash or money order for the 150. Um, if they have Coggins, there's an envelope for Coggins. It's all pretty streamlined over there. If anyone's good with paperwork and organizing, raise your hand because we'll need somebody over there. One thing that we do at these events, and we're mentoring them, so this is kind of their rodeo, but we're here as mentors, is if a horse comes in and needs Coggins, we'll tie like a ribbon onto it. And that way the vet knows right off, oh, this horse needs Coggins. Safety first. All these horses coming in, nobody knows anything about. We don't know these horses. Don't put yourself in a situation that you're gonna regret later. There's lots of help here, and that's great, but lots of help can also mean more people can get injured. Um, so it might be that through the day, 
you might be standing somewhere and we're like, oh, we can't have you here. We need you to move over here. It's not that we're trying to be mean or anything. It's your safety. We're just trying to get people to an area that's safe. Don't go in the pen if you, for any reason, feel it's not going to be safe. Um, have some, like Brianna, she works here. Be like, okay, <laughs> Brianna, we need you. Um, you know, have, you know, it's okay to be like, I'm not at this skill level to handle this horse. There are horses here th that are going to be coming in that will need euthanasia. Uh, typically at these events, about 50% need euthanasia. And that's really hard to wrap your head around. But this event is to help people that have suffering horses that they can't keep and they can't afford euthanasia. If you see something that's just horrendous, and we've seen some horrible, horrible situations with horses coming into these type events, just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Don't insult the owner. They're doing the right thing by having that horse come here. Yeah. Um, we would just want to thank them you know, so much for bringing the horse here. The vet's here. We're going to get it all the help we need and just move on from there. If uh, owner is pressuring, like, is my horse going to be euthanized? Just say, well, that's up to the veterinarian team and the trainer evaluations. Don't we, don't make, we don't make those, those decisions. Um, and it's a process. No euthanasia is going to happen here today unless it's an emergency, which it won't surprise me. It seems like every one of these events, there's some horrible case that comes in. But just keep the customers happy. We don't want them to feel bad by bringing a horse here. Ponytails wants to have a good reputation in the community. And if they come here and they heard somebody be like, I can't believe they didn't trim the horse's feet. And then they're going to leave and be like, man, they took my horse and now I feel like an idiot. We want them to feel happy and that they made the right call. So just reaffirming to them, thank you so much. You did an amazing job taking care of this horse. It's 30 years old now, a lot of people wouldn't have kept it that long. Like, just, just be nice to them and encourage them. So, honestly, I think we've streamlined it. I'm right here. Um, Brianna is right there. And Cindy is right there. All three of us have been mentoring, or we were in Tennessee for the boot camp, so we've seen this kind of streamline all the way through. So if any of you have any questions, I'm not available. Brianna or Cindy or Tawny. Um, Jason, <laughs> wave your hand again. I don't think they saw you. <laughs> Jason is um, um, Tawny's husband. He's very knowledgeable too. So if there's any questions that you guys have, feel free to ask one of them. In Tennessee, we rarely see snow, but these folks up here, they live in snow all winter long. And it's really amazing to see how well they do pulling these trucks and trailers. I mean, they're backing these trailers up in the snow and um, you know, snow plow is out here, uh, you know, trying to get the, the road in better condition. But um, if this was Tennessee, this event could not happen because um, when snow lands in Tennessee, everything kind of shuts down. All right, boys and girls. There's a lot going on there. <laughs> she has um, right rear pastern lameness. And then number three um, has a hind limb uh, conformational deformity. And weakness. And weakness. Hind limb, hind limb, weakness, deformity. So that'll be a P PTS. The war has been on my mind How do we get to the other side? Tell me that you're fine But I see it in your eyes You've been thinking about Things that make you shake And your shoulders tremble from the weight Of the feeling It's all coming down Oh, and I can't make you wait forever. You we can bring can that, make it that horse in the barn. Together. Pictures can be taken that. And let all of the past be the past. And we can have all that we've ever wanted. We can change our fate for better. Because we've been holding it together. All I know is the one. 
Yeah, just keep them together then. You can just kind of park this one over there. Is that one got blindness? There's so many horses coming in right now that we're moving some horses into another pen just so we can fit all the horses that are being surrendered. As these horses are being surrendered, the veterinarian is evaluating them, determining if they have quality of life issues. A lot of horses that come into these surrender type events, they need humane euthanasia. They're suffering from cancer, chronic pain, and their owners couldn't afford that. And so that's why the veterinarian's here to figure out exactly what each horse needs. It's always hard for a horse owner to surrender a horse. You know they love the horse, but they sometimes are in situations they can't keep horses, and that's why it's so important for this uh, open door philosophy to happen, is because every state really needs a, a safe place for horse owners to be able to surrender a horse and know that that horse is gonna receive every possibility to have a bright future. A lot of people are really have no other option than to give them away on, online or take them to an auction and then those horses end up in the slaughter pipeline. You told them that she's not lame, correct? What was that? You told them that she was not lame, correct? It's always really heartbreaking seeing people have to give up the horses they love so much. I'm just thankful that here at this event, we have an option for them because a lot of people are forced to give them away on Craigslist or they end up in an auction and then they sh are shipped on to slaughter. The snowplows kept running off and on all day. I was a little surprised that no one got in a wreck with so many trailers lining up. There were a few close calls, but thankfully everyone was safe. You want to walk them up? Yeah, I'll walk them up. Um, we've noticed this year the, the surrenders, there's a lot more surrenders coming in because of the hay shortage. Uh, this year, Ponytails was able to make their own hay. I can't afford to get hurt. My mom over 50, so she can't afford to get hurt. So. We're many hats here at Ponytails. I'm on the board and I also am an adoption partner. Um, so this is my first time attending an event like this that they've held. Um, I did some training evaluations on some of the horses here to see what training levels they're at. And then I also um, just helped with a castration on a little mini pony so I got to uh, learn from one of the veterinarians here how they do their castrations. The events ran pretty smoothly, a um, couple exciting things, a couple horses that are um, a little bit spirited but overall very well ran events. So. Like, I've enjoyed the event um, a lot, get to learn a lot of new things, work with a lot of different kinds of horses, so very exciting.
Thankfully, Wisconsin horses are used to this frigid cold weather because uh, they all can't fit in the barn right now. There's just too many horses being surrendered. Today's been a super busy day. I'm so proud of Ponytails and their team. They're doing a fabulous job. They've learned so much since we've been mentoring them and it really proves that they're taking what we're giving them and putting it to practice at here. Um, the vet's been really busy all day. Uh, they're doing photographs of horses. This horse is a Curly, which is kind of a rare breed. Um, and there's also Suffolk horses that were surrendered. So we see all kinds of horses at these uh, one day open door shelters. Um, so the vet goes through, does a health evaluation on each one, does their Coggins, and just make sure they're healthy and happy and can be adopted. So um, I think there's over f almost 50 horses surrendered so far and more are scheduled to come in. So it's a freezing cold day, but um, these, these folks up here in Wisconsin are doing a fabulous work. This is the last trailer of the day, and um, he's trying to back up into ponytails, and I don't know if the semi is going to make it or if it's going to slide off the road. It's really close. Now that all the horses have been surrendered, I want to sit down with Cindy and find out how it's really going. Uh, since receiving the grant in April at the time, um, well, I guess technically it was May 1st, you know, I mean, we were, we were struggling. Um, it was more, you know, how are we going to even, you know, afford to continue buying feed um, and hay for the horses, much less be able to pay someone to come here and help the organization grow. You know, it just, there was, it was not something that we ever thought would be able to do. Since boot camp, um, we, Leanne organized a volunteer day and we had a lot of volunteers out there that day. And they've continued to help out as much as they can. A couple of them have come to our meetings to learn more about the organization. But we were still struggling a bit with getting the horses evaluated in time. So we did um, hire Brianna. Um, so she is paid staff now when she evaluates the horses. And we also now have a second trainer under her. She's more commission-based at this time. Um, but she will come out and put more miles on the horses. Brianna will do her initial evaluations and Carrie will come out, put more miles on them, give them the extra work they need that Brianna can't do. We are currently looking um, for a barn manager and we have someone who seems to be doing really well and she's gonna start on a volunteer basis. And as we do get to the time or to the point where we can pay her, um, we're hoping to do so. I'm so happy we've been able to mentor Ponytails. They're doing great and I just hope they use all the tools we gave them to make their organization successful and it can thrive now. <laughs>